Uh, so can I, I just make it, he's very nearby, so I need a bit of a noise and adrenaline to get people freaked out. So can you, are you there? Give me a noise so Bruce can hear. <laughs> Bruce didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the master of disaster, the chainsaw champion for Royal Oak, Michigan, Mr. Bruce Campbell! Person. 
Yeah. Old Gary was fine. Fine. Fine for you, Sci-Fi Channel. So I stayed because I was, uh, I made two movies there. Um, a modern day classic known as Man with the Screaming Brain. <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't see it then, you didn't see it now. <laughs> yeah, we did. No, you didn't. <laughs> Trust me, no, you didn't. Although you did watch Alien Apocalypse, which was the other movie I did there, where they, they got their memo screwed up. It was post-apocalyptic, so they had beards, but they, I think the memos were to put the wigs on their face and the beards on top of their head. <laughs> and that one was very successful. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> Sci-fi's most successful TV movie up until, that, up until that point. So Bulgaria, big hits. I had a huge hit out of Bulgaria. So I was living there, my wife and I. Because uh, it's... Um, if you travel a lot, work on location, you don't really want to stay in hotels. That's a drag. That's why actors tear them up and cause havoc because it drives them insane. So we, my wife and I, try and stay in an apartment. So learning to shrug off the daily twists and turns was just part of life in Bulgaria. Hell, I had nothing to complain about. I had a job in a third floor apartment with no elevator. <laughs> the place we chose in Sofia came at the recommendation of Ivan. He had grown up in the neighborhood and considered it quiet. <laughs> Kiro knew everything. He knew everything. My wife's luggage didn't show up. She came back from a side trip. Luggage was gone. She did, I would go, Kiro, that's so weird that uh, one piece of luggage would disappear. He'd go, hang on. <laughs> it's raining at midnight. He knocks on the door. Here's your goddamn luggage. Here's your luggage. Where did you get this? Just you use the luggage, okay? <laughs> He would not accept bribes from the police. Everyone bribed the police because they had a little stick with a symbol on it. They would go and flag you over because they were poor, because they were, they were poorly paid. Poorly paid police steal to survive. That's just human nature. I've seen it in multiple countries. So they pull you over. Most people go, okay, fine, here's your five leva, and they're on their way. Kudo goes, why did you pull me over? And then ang the, the language is so angry. It sounds like they're shouting at each other, when really it's like, how are the kids? Great, how's everything? <laughs> See you Saturday at the barbecue, cool. <laughs> Kid was like, what is this for? You were talking on telephone. Yeah, give me a ticket. It's hundred dollars. Just give me five lever. He goes, no, I'm not giving you anything. Give me a ticket. I have a company I'm working for. They will pay ticket. <laughs> and he just like, the all the time. It was so awesome. And his logic was so weird. I'm the only guy in a van, 15 passenger van, scouting locations, who wears a seatbelt. <laughs> Kudo, no way in hell is he wearing a seatbelt. He see a cop coming. He buckle his seatbelt, <laughs> cop goes past, he doesn't buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Kudo, you drive way faster than the speed limit. You don't wear a seatbelt, why? Friend of mine was in car accident. He was thrown free from car and he lived. Guy who had seatbelt died. <laughs> Seatbelts will kill you. I, like, oh my God. I can't argue with that logic, I guess. <laughs> our neighborhood, or our neighbors, were quiet. Yes, almost too quiet. Culturally, the passing of someone in the hallway of our building never required the friendly nod or hello, because people didn't really want to know anything about anyone. I was making a movie called Man with the Screaming Brain, where half my head is, you know, it's a classic motion picture, you'll see it. <laughs> you know, he's got a brain operation, it's a very pronounced scar, I'm running around the city of Sophia. So in between shots, we would, I would just walk up like, sit next to someone at a bus stop, they'd look at you and then go, oh, <laughs> don't get involved. <laughs> They never look back. They look once, they were mortified, and never look back because they might get involved in something. Safest place my wife ever went to. Midnight, walking around. Because under the Soviet system, you did anything weird, you fucking disappeared. <laughs> so nobody messed with anybody. It was awesome. 
<laughs> Why not? It was awesome. So, <laughs> now Americans, they will spew their life story. Physical ailments included within 10 minutes of meeting a complete stranger. In Bulgaria, there was more of a sense that information was need to know. The daily greeting in Bulgaria was usually Dobrden, loosely translated, you know, what's up? Whenever I offered it while hauling sacks of groceries three flights up, the reaction was usually a surprise look like, did that stranger just speak to me randomly? The privacy thing was evident in the number of locks on the average apartment door, which was around three. Our third floor doors had two locks vertically aligned. The top one was a conventional deadbolt dealio, and the bottom block controlled the horizontal bar that secured the door side to side. I got used to those locks one night. Oh, well, I got to use those, but not in a good way. In movies and in TV shows, I played a lot of heroic characters, uh, willing to put their butts on the line for the greater good. Sadly, in real life, I'm uh, mostly a coward. <laughs> this became evident yet again one night after consuming a particular herb that grows naturally on God's green earth. <laughs> okay, there was no meth involved, no nothing, none of that. God grows marijuana. Did you realize that? I can use that in any state in the United States, and that's my argument. Most conservative person on the planet. Who grows marijuana? God grows marijuana. For me. <laughs> because I've been a very good boy. <laughs> so, one might assume that a certain paranoid tendencies are the result of such herbal consumption, and sure enough, moments after partaking, I heard excited shouting echoing up from the street. I walked to the back of the apartment and looked out the window just in time to hear a resident on the ground floor shout, Amerikansky! Son of a bitch. They're on to me. I need to get word to Brother Don right now and tell him that the commies finally got me. We're very concerned about the communists in the 80s. They've been spying on me and now they must have smelled the herb and notified the authorities I'm screwed. To inflame my paranoia, I turned back to see flashing lights from the street in front of the building, the alternating multicolored kinds that cops use. I ran to the front window, feeling a little bit like tough guy John Dillinger on the run. Sure enough, two uniformed police officers were approaching our building. Shit, Ida, what should we do? Nothing, stop freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> That's your job in life, is to tell me to stop freaking out. It took a while for the cops to work their way up to us. It appeared that they were talking with residents on each floor. Then a dreaded sound. Boots on a barren concrete step, fueled by the THC, the increasing sound became positively Edgar Allan Poe-like in its constant, growing intensity. Desperate for a plan, I whirled to Ida, as my wife, I ordered you to go out there and deal with them. <laughs> she looks at me, you what? <laughs> I pulled, half pulled, half pushed her to the door. You talk to them outside the door, not at the door. <laughs> What's the difference? She asked, growing more annoyed. Well, they might try and force their way in. You take the conversation outside, it's harder for them to break the door down. <laughs> I've been on a spy show, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she didn't respond, my wife. She just shot me a classic, I am so disappointed in you look. <laughs> Opened the door and stepped outside. My heart was sending so much blood through my veins that I became lightheaded and experienced strange images of Russian gulags in Siberia and the dread of scurvy. It was all too much, so I locked the door. That's right. That's right. I locked my wife out of the apartment with two strange policemen who could have easily carted her away. Meanwhile, Ida and the cops were experiencing their own foibles. The way the lighting works in Bulgarian apartment hallways is that you twist a timer, which turns on an overhead light for a given period of time. Uh, never enough. <laughs> this is to prevent costly waste, of course, but it's overkill. Another time was at the base of our steps to our apartment. You turn it all you want, nine out of ten times I'd have to dive for the timer on the landing of the third floor to avoid being plunged into total darkness. The cops had turned the timer on, but it became forgotten in their ill-fated attempt to communicate. I knew three words of Bulgarian, and the police knew exactly zero words of English. 
It made for a short, frustrating conversation. I was pretty much convinced that the cops were there to investigate a robbery, not perform a celebrity drug bust, but none of it mattered because the hall lights with timer expired turned off. In pitch blackness, Ida screamed at the top of her lungs. It was a scream of innocence, she later recounted. <laughs> but as Ida turned and broke for the apartment doorknob, she realized that she was locked out and she screamed again, which made the cops freak out and argue while foaming for the twisty timer. Eventually the lights came back on, the shouting subsided, and the cops, not wanting anything more to do with the situation, got the hell out of it. <laughs> back in the apartment, Ida slammed the door behind her and delivered an impressive what for speech. I don't remember the particulars, of course, but <laughs> she used the words incompetent and useless more than once. <laughs> and, uh, but guess what? Uh, it worked. Uh, <laughs> okay, it worked. Things that I may want to talk about are, may not be things you want to talk about, so it's your turn now to find out what you've got to find out before the night is over. We're gonna, so whatever you want, whatever uh, subject matter. But if you don't start, we'll never get out of here. <laughs> Bruce, yes. is, there, is there anything that you have really wanted to do on the show that stars... Anything I wanted to do on Ash vs. Evil Dead? Yeah, get ratings. <laughs> <laughs> we may be days away from failure. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's the modern world of television viewing. Nobody watches it real time anymore. And you cheap bastards <laughs> you want one platform to watch and you want one monthly bill. That's all you're gonna do. I gotta go to Stars also and download their app too. Oh, and that's six ninety five a month? Oh, oh, whoa. When it got to Netflix, people were the first two seasons dropped on Netflix. People were acting like it had previously been shown on Mars and there was no way for them to find it. <laughs> so, you can find it. Evil Dead fans are great, fervent pirates. Because <laughs> a guy tweeted today, man, I don't know how to find this show. Another guy tweeted, well, you just don't know how to pirate something. <laughs> Apparently, Astro's Evil Dead is one of the most illegally downloaded shows. Thanks, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, your character on Bird Notice used the alias Chuck Finley. Chuck Finley, yes. Did, did, was that uh, uh, to your father? Or was it Chuck Finley, my dad knew a guy named Chuck Finley for some reason, so it was a really easy name to remember on the show. And it's great in restaurants, Chuck Finley, party of two. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun to hear. <laughs> it's like if you go on the ride, at, uh, if you go to like Universal Studios and take the eat, there was the you, there was the uh, the ET ride. Uh, you could put in your name so the ET would say goodbye to you at the end. <laughs> goodbye, Chuck. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great for that. Great party favor. Uh, yes, Ash. Of course, you're standing up. Yes. Look at <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, oh. Like looking in the mirror, baby. <laughs> versus Jason versus Freddy. We had, it was about a two minute conversation. <laughs> it kind of went like this. Hi, this is New Line Cinema. How about if Ash fights Jason and Freddy? We go, hey, that's great. Then Ash can kill them both. <laughs> um, no, no, you're not killing Ash. <laughs> <Good. laughs> Sir, if uh, you had no control over the outcome. Don't forget, have you, have you, you've seen all the Friday the 13th part 76. No one's killing anybody. Ash at least gets to kill monsters. Do you realize that? For the most part. Ash is way more successful than all those guys at Yes. So, uh, let me tell you something, by the way, since you're Ash, since you bring it to my attention. 
Ashley J. Williams is perhaps the greatest hero in the history of motion pictures, and I'll make it really simple for you. Does he have a Millennium Falcon he can go running like a little chicken little tooth? <laughs> oh, where is it? Oh, it's not there. Oh, maybe I'll get in my Batmobile. <laughs> Fly away. No, no, sir. No, no, no. Oh, a web swing away. Oh, mm -hmm. getting bitten by a radioactive spider is not so bad. No, no, sir. So if he wins and defeats evil for all time, if we get to season four, Ash will be the greatest hero in motion picture history because he has no other super spy special skills. He does not come from another planet, sir. He comes from a shitty little town and a shitty little trailer. <laughs> You can sit down. <laughs> I don't like to toot my own horn, but root toot toot. <laughs> uh, yes, right here. Maniac Cop. What was that like? <laughs> Doing Maniac Cop? Cheap. <laughs> it was really cheap. I get a call from Bill Lustig, who directed it. It was the first movie I ever did that was not directed by Sam Raimi, so it was very exciting. Let's see how these other guys do it. Bill goes, come on, I need you to go up to New York City. Uh, we're going to shoot some stuff early at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I go, OK. Yeah, we're going to shoot a chase scene during St. Patrick's Day Parade. Okay, all right. So we get there during the parade. There's 10,000 police officers on the street. It's supposed to be a cop chasing me in and out of the people. <laughs> I'm dressed in civilian clothes, so I'm waiting to shoot this shot. Meanwhile, the, the cop actor is standing there very uncomfortably waiting to shoot the shot. And then another cop comes walking up. He goes, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> What the fuck are you doing here? I, mean, I turned and walked away. I disappeared into the crowd. That was my introduction to the classic Maniac Cop. They didn't have, they had no money. Maniac Cop 2 was financed by guys with tracksuits and jewelry. I didn't get it. I learned the greatest phrase from a guy. These guys show up at lunch. I mean, they're from a catalog of, like, Goodfellas. The pair slicked back and the suits and the thing. I asked one guy, what do you do? He goes, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> oh my god, you're from Latvia. Are you from Bulgaria? <laughs> that's, that's all I got from me. Mafia. Chief and Mafia. Yes. Rereading parts of the first book. Yeah, uh, well, it was just. It, it was this is the trilogy, by the way. <laughs> this is the further confessions. Okay, uh, 15 years from now will be the final confessions. <laughs> so it's sort of like a George Lucas trilogy, <laughs> <laughs> only more comprehensible. <laughs> He went back and fixed his shitty shots. <laughs> we never did. <laughs> See those garden hoses sticking right out there? From the blood? <laughs> Sorry, sir, did I answer your question? No, no, no. <laughs> I did, you did. No, no, so what I was actually um, going to ask about was, um, you had a segment where you talked about you'd did sound work uh, on we Dark We did Man. sound work on Dark Man. And, um, yes. Watch that movie, actually. I'm every criminal who fell to his death. And there really are like six of them. One guy fell from a great height. That had to be extended. I had to like really use my diaphragm on that one. Other ones were short and sharp. So it's quite a skill. Was that? No. Was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, I want to know if there's any truth to um, the Maniac Cop story. Um, there's a lot of people who say that things online can be misconstrued, but apparently you were Things online can be. Not correct, you're saying? <laughs> oh, I, I've never had that experience. I've been dead about a half a dozen times. In New Zealand, I always fall off a cliff. In New Zealand. <laughs> Jesus, what, what's the obsession? Yeah. So, um, but apparently you were up for the, the lead role, but it went to I was up for the lead role. Our own 
Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Well, did you work with him or anything, or any funny stories? I did one of Liam's lines in the movie that he doesn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> we, because I was on the sound department, we imitated everybody all the time. So he was, no, Julie, no, please, no, 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 no. <laughs> Before he made these like revenge movies. Um, <laughs> So we were mixing, and Sam goes, ah, Bruce, come on, I, I need you to yell Julie. Okay, Julie, so there's one of those. In there. And then I, they knew that I did some of his voices, so I came in and did the television. I did the television version, where well, you can't swear on in American television. So it was, oh God, no, became, no, Lord, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, no. <laughs> I know your guy, Liam. So you're never getting him back. He's in America. <laughs> although, although he may want to come here to save on taxes. <laughs> right? Wouldn't you? Yep. I'm a director. Buy a castle. <laughs> Good trick, yes. Uh, what's the worst way that lately Sam Raimi has fucked you over? The worst way Sam Raimi has fucked me over just by writing the character three letters A S H <laughs> on a piece of paper. That's all right, it'll be over soon, sir. <laughs> you won't be seeing much more of that guy. <laughs> it'll be in your imagination now, which is better than the real thing. Yes? Uh, I know you're not living in Michigan anymore, but is there anything you miss about the uh, Great Lakes State? Michigan, the Great Lakes State, yes. Um, yes, the cold winters, because it freezes the spores in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> the west coast of the states, uh, spores can form in your brain and cause you to forget who you are. <laughs> so spores are very important. So when you get snowstorms here, it's important for uh, to keep the spores low <laughs> so you don't forget where you came from. I don't have to go ever back there when it snows, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> uh, yes. Being the tormentor in Spider-Man movies, how do I feel? Uh, well, it's, it's, sir, it's more than that. It's more complicated than that. Because if you think about it, the insignificant role, ring announcer, Spider-Man wants to be called the human spider. I tell him it sucks. I introduce him as the amazing Spider-Man. Technically, I named the character. Oh yeah, Spider-Man 2. Little small part is the usher, snooty usher. Spider-Man, Peter Parker's late. Come to see his girlfriend in a play. So this, the usher won't let him in because he's late. It'll ruin the illusion. Technically, you know, sir, I'm the only character who's ever defeated Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man 3, the good one. <laughs> French Vader D. <laughs> Spider-Man comes to me for help to propose marriage to Mary Jane. How many superheroes go to mortals for help? Zero, sir. <laughs> Did I help him out? Not really, because he was kind of a dick to me in the first two movies. <laughs> There's your Spider-Man, sir. Did they make any more of those, by the way? <laughs> oh, a few? Yeah, yes. Uh, will we ever see an Army of Darkness 2? Army of Darkness 2. You have 15 new hours of this shit on stars. <laughs> 15 hours. 15 hours. Our practice would be 90 minutes, and it would come out once every 10 years. TV's the way to go. But you don't have stars, and you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you've got hours and hours of joy ahead of you, sir. Especially when they cancel the show, it becomes more valuable. Yes. Of a Hotep TV series. No, sir, not with me. I told both those guys, uh, Joe Lansdale and Don Coscarelli, uh, I don't want to do another one because um, I think some movies just just leave them alone. Leave them alone because I know the review. I can tell you the review, by the way, for Bubba Hotep too. Want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. Nice try. This. <laughs> oh, didn't quite capture that same magic as the first one. <laughs> so 
no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got to read that headline. Yes, ma'am. If and when Ashford University said finish it. If and when, when, when. <laughs> <laughs> like Monday when. <laughs> What's on the horizon? Somebody the other day, they asked me, do you have any big things coming up? I said, no, but I got a little, a bunch of little teeny ones. I'm gonna make little teeny movies in my state of Oregon because it's a beautiful, unphotographed state. It has high desert, it has beautiful mountains and shoreline that rivals some country's shoreline. <laughs> my favorite sign, you probably have them here too, is danger this is the, on the coast. Danger, high winds may blow you off steep cliffs into deep water with strong current. <laughs> Have a nice hike. <laughs> okay, plunge to your death. Yes. Is there a particular role you regret turning down? A particular role I was uh, regret that I had turned down? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No, I don't have any of those. Because it's, you gotta trust yourself. and. You know, I don't have any of those, oh, I could have been Luke Skywalker, you know. I tried out to, you know, to be in the movie Congo. That was as far as I got. <laughs> uh, me and Billy Zane were going to be, no, not Congo, no, it was, sorry, it was the, the Phantom. So I tried once to be a superhero. Billy Zane got it. The movie bombed. It worked out great. <laughs> so, I don't have to do that anymore. Yes. Did you ever get your own box on Sam Raimi, did I ever get him back? Yeah, but all the so people you were you seeing the version of you the you like I watched with the comedy ones and he said he said that you would like think you were treating you know, <laughs> Yeah, Sam's bad. He's a bad <laughs> <laughs> What's great about it is he's slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> he can't hurt me as much as he used to. <laughs> and my stunt guy will beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Stunt guys here in town. Raisho Vezelev from Sofia, Bulgaria. <laughs> Raisho, he's great. I hear across the set, smash, smash, boom, boom, cut. All right, action, awesome, awesome. And I see Raisho limping across the stage. <laughs> Raisho, how'd that go? He goes, fuck this shit, boss. <laughs> and he would always add boss so that he didn't get in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, Raisho Vezelev. I use a stuntman a lot now, a lot. I get up and I go like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we'll do like whatever, a handful more, and then we'll move on to pressing issues. Yes? All the various things that you've shot over the years, is there a scene that has, you have the most fun when recording? A scene that is fun. Or hated. Movies that are fun to make are hard to watch. That's my motto. If you have time to sit around and tell funny actor stories with your buddies, you're actually not working hard enough. If you can't breathe and your knees are bleeding and uh, your head is pounding because the stunt you just did, then you're then you're onto something. You know, I couldn't wait for any of the Evil Dead movies to be done, every single one. Evil Dead 2, the milk in my refrigerator, that was the expiration date, was the same date that we were going to be done filming. I test that milk. Go on, you bad yet? You bad yet? <laughs> so everyone's like, which movie, which you led movie was the funnest? None of them was funny. None, none of them at all. But these are things, Sam Raimi's a very indelible filmmaker, and a lot of times uh, these movies are really difficult to do. Yeah. Um, Risco County Jr. County Jr. You're, you're the one who watched that. <laughs> okay. I liked it too. <laughs> I learned how to shoot horses, how to film horses. Yuck <laughs> <laughs> it up all, all you want. It's a really vital skill because horses don't care what your problem is. <laughs> horses are herd animals. We had a wrangler who knew exactly how to do this and I've never seen it work successfully ever since. If you had a scene of Briscoe around the corner on his horse. If it was just me and that horse, that horse would be going, what the fuck, what the fuck? I gotta be with my guys over there. <laughs> and the horse would be impossible to contain. So Gordon, the wrangler, would send another horse down there, 
facing my horse. And they're horses, so they're biting each other, you know, but they're, I need to be with this guy. And my horse would actually be facing away from where I need to go. It couldn't say action either. They'd go, ah, come ahead. And they would go, anytime, Bruce. <laughs> Directors hated it because we took the A word. They couldn't go, action! Horses knew when you said roll sound, their ears went, oh, popped right up in the air like, something's happening, something's happening. <laughs> so you had to do sign language. This meant roll sound. This meant stand by, and this meant go. So when they said come ahead, I would turn the horse's head away and ride down and past the camera were two other horses waiting to receive the horse. Because <laughs> then the horse would ride up to them and go, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> you had to know how to do that. And it actually seems so basic, but movies are really dumb about how they shoot horses. Uh, but this one, this is really the smartest ever. Okay, one last example. You get up on the horse, swing up on it, say a line to the school marm, rear up, ride out of town. Directors love that. We'll do a crane shot, we'll come in, we'll boom, boom, boom. We're like, no, no, no. That's four different shots with three different horses. <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about? Well, the horse that rears only rears. <laughs> That's all it does. If you want that horse while you're doing dialogue, you give it, it's a cue, you squeeze its rib cage, and it'll go, wow, and it'll go up. So if you cue it incorrectly in the middle of a dialogue scene, I could get cracked in the face by this thing. It's only for the, you only use it to rear. So we could tell the director, okay, cut. So he, they really got depressed because they realized it. So then now you get on the horse, the horse knows it's supposed to ride out of town. You're gonna get one take of that. Take two, as soon as you swing your leg up on that horse, it's trying to get out of town. It knows exactly, oh, I got this, I got this. <laughs> no, if they want take two, you take the horse and you sort of trot it around. <laughs> Which direction are we going? I don't know. I think we're just trotting around, I'm not really sure. Action, ha! Ah! <laughs> fuck, he tricked me again. <laughs> now the horse is like, you're not getting me again, you're not. So then in between take two and three, you'd have to ride it in circles for like 20 minutes. <laughs> of course, like, now I'm confused. <laughs> and I was the only one who could feed it. <laughs> Had a grain pocket. <laughs> so you reward, you do the takes, you, you rehearse it, and, you, and then I reward the horse for doing nudging or whatever. So you'll see in the show sometimes, because the horse wants the reward, but the scene will play, the horse will nudge me I'm gonna keep talking, the horse is like, hey, hey, hey. So we had a couple of takes, like, I'm, hey, I'll get back to you in a second. And he's like, where's my fucking treat? You know? And, 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 so you just had to learn how to do that. Once you could master it, it was really an awesome thing. So if you work with horses, figure it out. <laughs> yes, we'll do like two more questions, yeah. Hi, um, have you ever, oh, sorry, I'm <laughs> We're very casual around here. Same car 
his mother dropped us off one time to see a clockwork orange. Uh, she had no idea what it was, and we kind of didn't either. But she wasn't going to see it. She just dropped us off. Have fun at the movie, boys. Drove off. Comes back. We were kind of mortified. That was a movie. Really good, I think. Uh, yeah, it was horrifying. So, um, yeah, we saw that movie under her nose, but she dropped us off. So <laughs> she didn't know. She didn't know. So sort of like that. I was a very good boy, though, sir. I don't know what kind of errant childhood you had. <laughs> These are. <my> <laughs> did, you, did you ever train spot any of that business? <laughs> that was you were young. Uh, last one from the uh, chainsaw foam hand. How could you not take a question from that? Next, to, not you, Mr. Boomstick. No. <laughs> Yes. Actors getting souvenirs. Yeah, from sets they work. Yeah, on. sure. What would be the best thing that you took as a souvenir? Uh, my brother has the sawed-off shotgun from the original Evil Dead. Not because he it likes or cares about the movie, because he likes guns. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he has it. He also stole the keys to the front door. They gave me a rubber copy of them. <laughs> My brother's a weird guy. He thinks those have value. They, maybe they might. Uh, people, by the way, have been sneaking onto the property in rural Tennessee and stealing the sandstone bricks from the fireplace. <laughs> don't. Don't do it. There are a lot of guns in America, even more now, and you will be shot in the south, in Tennessee, for trespassing. And you should be. <laughs> Leave that fucking place alone. Leave it alone. The guy is signing, puts this big brick down. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you can't really sign sandstone either. So fuck off. <laughs> so I guess that's it. So we're gonna re-rig for a brief moment, and then we're gonna sign some stuff. But most importantly, uh, thank you for coming tonight for uh, supporting the arts. Uh, if you don't, they will die. Uh, actors will die and live horribly depressing lives. So thank you for sending my ungrateful children through partial college. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll see you again in a little bit. Thank you very much.